Okay, the <coughs> holiday is over. Uh, and I see I have uh, three homeworks handed in today, as I said you could for those people who had calls, conflicts. Any others? Yeah, I saw a couple in the drawer. Thank you. In any case, for that reason, normally we'd be handing back the graded homeworks to, on a Tuesday together with the solutions. We'll be doing that on Thursday. All right. Last time, we looked at Fano's inequality, which says the, if you, all right, we looked at Markov chains. as a model for data processing or for Markov chains. And uh, we got Fano's inequality that says if we go x to y to x hat, then uh, the entropy uncertainty of x given y there's a lower bound on the probability of error expressed this way. PE log of the alphabet size of Y. So it just cinches down that obvious fact that if the entropy is small, you can make a good guess, and if you can make a good guess, the entropy is small. In this case, conditional entropy, and a guess based on side information y. The data processing inequality said that the mutual information between x and z is less than or equal to the mutual information of x and y. In other words, anything downstream, including those things having to do with data processing, any z that's downstream from y will have less dependence on x than y did. Therefore, you can't increase your information about uh, X, or another way to look at it is the log of the number of resolvable inputs X as seen by Y uh, will be finer, greater, more than if you saw it downstream by Z. If I'm 30 miles from a car with two headlights, they start to merge. If I'm 60 miles away, I probably can only distinguish headlines, headlights that are this far apart. The sufficient statistic is uh, all, some function of y that tells you all you need to know about x. A minimal sufficient statistic is one that is closest in the Markov sense to x. And we defined that last time. A bottleneck, we actually didn't give that application, but it says the following, that the mutual information between x and z is less than or equal to the log of the alphabet size of y. Suppose you have x and z, but x gave rise to a y, which gave rise to a z. How much dependence can there be between x and z? Well, it turns out that if y only takes on one value, log of 1 or 0, then x and z have to be independent. 
nothing can survive that ultimate bottleneck. Now, there are bottlenecks in your brain, you know, the, you have two half brains and then there's this small bridge between them. So that's a bottleneck. The mutual information of the left and the right hand side of your brain is less than log of the number of distinguishable, well, the log of the number of states that this bridge can take on. Of course, that's a trillion or something, so it's not useful uh, without further, further thought. But a bottleneck is useful, let's just say, suppose I am a historian, I look at the past and I want to predict the future, and I make some measurements on the present. Well, the measurements would be y, and if I don't make many measurements on the present, then I really can't say anything about the future, given the past. They tend to be indep independent or log of why? Oh, by the way, the proof of this is very simple. You just use the data processing inequality, and then the fact that the mutual information between, say, x and y is less than the entropy of y, and the entropy of y is less than the log of the alphabet size. All right, today we want to prove the asymptotic equal partition property, which in a way is the heart of information theory, or at least the communication theory aspects of it. Well, more than that. Uh, it's the reason why we replicate problems and we have error correcting codes with lots of information bits and lots of check bits we go to the law of large numbers where everything looks uh, sort of uniform and the same. And that allows us to make precise statements. One of the questions that came up is uh, somebody in class um, by email said, you know, uh, how can entropy be a data compression limit when in fact we can't achieve the entropy? Uh, more or less implicit in the email was you can achieve entropy plus one. Well, if the entropy is large, as it would be if you repeat the problem, entropy of x1 through xn, uh, then one bit out of n goes to zero as n tends to infinity. So indeed, the sort of the round off error due to the integer nature of sequ how many questions it would take, say, to resolve x, uh, that round off disappears. It becomes negligible. In any case, the AEP allows a precise statement, although not the sharpest one. The sharpest one will come from Huffman coding, at least in the case of minimizing the expected number of questions to resolve some unknown object x. By the way, have you, how many people have seen that toy? It's some kind of a, like an egg and you ask it quite, uh, it asks you questions. Oh, you think of something like a squirrel. And then it asks you, is it uh, an animal? And you say, yes. And then they say, is it, does it weigh more than a million pounds? And you say, no, and so on. And often at a certain point it says, I think I know the answer. And then at some other point it guesses the answer. How many people have seen that toy? Yeah, that's great. You know, I suspect that toy plays around with you because 
I was showing this toy to um, an eight-year-old kid who said, I'm thinking of a squirrel. So it asks these questions, like the ones I mentioned. And then, when it seemed to be narrowing down, it said, well, things like, is it brighter than the sun? And, uh, you know, uh, can you, uh, you know, use it to dig holes or something like that? And so they, this young man got very excited because he was fooling the egg. And then all of a sudden it said, is it a squirrel? And he jumped out of his... <laughs> he couldn't believe it. Uh, so I think they just threw away a couple of questions just to set him up. Uh, that particular game tries to answer in fewer than 20 questions. And it's been trained. It's a neural network. It's been trained. It has, at most, two to the 20th answers stored away in it. And uh, uh, it has this uh, good sequence of questions. And apparently, it's learned the kinds of things that people think of, which then the egg tries to guess. So uh, it's had substantial training on human beings and uh, the strange things they would come up with. I always liked the one that said, uh, where the answer is uh, rubber tires, you know, the tires on the car. And the reason was, is because that's a vegetable, but it doesn't seem like it's a vegetable. Unfortunately, the egg got that one, too. All right, so uh, we're going to look at the law of large numbers for products and then give five reasons uh, for the naturalness of H, the entropy H. In other words, five domains of inquiry or five questions that have H as the answer. Next time we'll look at questions like for dependent processes, does the entropy grow linearly or does it sort of plateau out? So in particular for the stationary process. So let's start by talking about law of large numbers for products. We'll start by saying let y1, y2 be iid, by that I independent, identically distributed. And the question is, is what does this sum of random variables, i equals 1 to n, how does it behave? Well, this is the law of averages, or law of large numbers. And we know it goes to the expected value of y. Now, there's a simple proof of this. Uh, this goes with probability 1, but if you only wanted to con uh, prove convergence in probability, and if you have the second moment, 